Well, we've spoken about this problem a bit. There is um, there's a simple way of fixing it, but most people aren't even aware that it can happen. If you're in a crowded spot, could be a you know, could be a train, could be an airport. People can just drop pictures into your phone if you haven't turned off. If you haven't got the privacy setting going on the AirDrop, that's the function uh, for the fruity type of phone, they can just drop some pretty, uh, well, it doesn't matter. You can't filter it. It might be offensive words. It might be an offensive image. Paul Litherland joins us. He's a former police officer, cybersecurity expert, and he runs Surf Online Safe. How are you going, Paul? Good morning, Raf. How are you? I'm good. Can you explain that AirDrop issue? How does it work? What's the problem? When we're talking about our uh, Apple users here, so anyone's got a, an iPad or an iPhone, is is the little section called um, AirDrop, which is basically in its simple sense is if you're working in an office, uh, rather than connecting to a, 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 an internet connection, you can send a, a document or an, or an image uh, amongst your work colleagues just over a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi network. So it's a very simple thing to do. Um, where we're talking now in regards to this uh, activity like cyber flashing is the fact that someone may not be aware that their ability to receive such a document or such, in this case, such an image, uh, it, it does have that capability set to, to uh, on, basically, uh, on their device. So they can be sitting on a train or in a shopping centre and, and any random person can basically walk past, identify them and, and send an image. And it can be... I mean, it can be really offensive, can't it? They can just drop... While they're asking if you want that image, you're also getting a preview of that image. So they can be offensive words or an offensive picture. Yeah, yeah. And this is... Um, I mean, we've, we've, we've had the, obviously flashing around for centuries in, in the real world, and, and this is now starting to, to build some uh, real momentum in the digital world in regards to just some simple uh, offensive images or, or some quite graphic stuff which can be sent... Um, someone obviously sees that on their device and, and can be quite offended from it. So it's it's a, a growing trend, unfortunately, that's started to grow over the last couple of years in particular. So let's get to sort of personal solutions before we get to broader ones. How do you turn it off, Paul? How do I stop someone just shoving a picture onto my screen? Okay, first priority is getting your settings on your on your Apple phone. So when you, when you go into your settings, one of the first tabs uh, you see under your settings is AirDrop. So we get into our airdrop, there's three options. There's everyone, there's contacts only, and there's private. So we just got to tick that box that says contacts only or, or, or no one. Um, so turn that off and that stops the ability for anyone on that Bluetooth or that Wi-Fi network within 30 or 40 metres of you to identify that your device is viewable across uh, that particular network. Is there anything like a, I don't know, a train provider or an airport, can they filter that stuff or block it? There's nothing really it can, no. you can do more broadly, is there? No, and this is the frustrating thing with with a lot. I mean, our, our phones are getting smarter and smarter, F, but uh, unfortunately it seems that a lot of our base settings are, are sort of still infantile in regards to those sorts of settings. So um, a, a lot of our kids especially may turn it on because if they're in a classroom environment and they want to share, uh, and a lot of schools will do that, um, but then they leave the school and they forget that it's turned on, they jump on a train. It would be great to have a little reminder or something yes. from the device to say, oh, do you know that you're no longer at school uh, through GPS or we just send a reminder, but we just, don't, we just don't do that. So we need to get that sort of technology changed a little bit. And is there a way of tracking it, Paul? Because I've often wondered, I've had mine uh, switched off, uh, sorry, switched mm -hmm. on sometimes and people have just dropped a, you know, like a completely innocent picture onto my phone. But I notice... I can't really identify that person. If I screenshot it, is there any way I can track that person if they are trying to send me something offensive in a public place? No, it's, and this is the problem we have. It is very difficult. So uh, most of our internet connections, our, um, uh, if you're going over a known server or a, or a connection, then, yeah, there's options to, to trace. Um, but when you're just over a standard Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi connection, it can be very difficult. And what we're also finding, Raf, is if, if I'm sitting there on a train and I'm uh, choosing to send an image, I, I can change the name of my device straight after. So... So anyone sort of searching that area um, might be looking for a John Smith who may have sent the image, but John's already changed his device name to Bill Bloggs. And, and, and so this is where that in, in, in initial identification yes. is extremely difficult. So tracing beyond that um, is, is very hard. And, and, and with that too, mate, is a large number of people won't report these images as well. So 
Um, in, in fact, it's almost like 60 to 70 percent where if they receive an image, they'll go, OK, well, that's fine. I'll just turn it off. So it, it can be quite difficult um, for anyone, uh, not only an individual, for the police to chase these sort of in, images. Paul Litherlin, thank you. He is the director of Surf Online Safe. Um, if you've got that type of phone, go into your settings and remember um, it's up to you whether or not you turn that off. 14.